And so as uh, Washington State announces uh, another death, the 15th over in the United States, in the last couple of hours, Italy has also announced its largest daily increase in fatalities. They've risen by 49 to 197. It's the second highest number of deaths from the virus after China. Let's get more on this. I'm joined by Professor Ilaria Capua, an Italian virologist at the University of Florida. Thank you for speaking to us. Um, first you, off, what's happening in these northern parts of, of Italy? Why is it such a hot spot? Well, um, I think that it is clear that the virus was introduced um, in Europe, in the whole of Europe. Um, and Italy was the first country to detect it. And I actually think that that was because we had two um, Chinese tourists that were hospitalized in our high containment er uh, unit in Rome. And that drew a lot of mediatic attention to um, the problem. And the virus was picked up, um, I would say, as uh, in one case, it was actually... Um, I mean, it, it wasn't the cause of death. It was like a, a finding, um, why don't we look for it? And they found it. And this is in, in Veneto. But uh, in, in Lombardy also, you might recall that um, the, the first young person who was affected had already been to the hospital because he'd been ill for a while. So the impression that we have is that the infection has been circulating um, I would say uh, subclinically, uh, it was probably confused with influenza and with other influenza-like illnesses of the season. And suddenly when they started looking for it, they found it. And the question that I have is, um, have there been any other similar peaks of mortality in at-risk populations in the rest of Europe? That would be extremely important to know. Uh, Personally, I've been following the Italian situation very closely. Um, this is a very, very big stress on the country. There's a horrible stigma that is completely unjustified because obviously there was a swarm of viruses <clears throat> that came through um, visitors from um, Asia and they came to the whole of, um, of Europe. And so I would not be surprised that uh, many other European countries will um, shortly um, uh, communicate that they also have um, a significant number of, of cases being admitted to hospital. I also would like to point out that in most of Europe, as you know, but um, healthcare is free, and therefore um, the, the the problem, the biggest problem that Italy is facing, is that the intensive care units are filling up, and you know that these intensive care units are not generally left empty because you know there's people in there anyway, and and this is causing. Um, uh, realignment and reprioritizing of the hospital's activities and therefore there are patients that need to professor, have surgery sorry and professor other i'm just going to I just want to jump in because i really want to get this this question um in regarding a, a vaccination and the development of a vaccination so many countries appear to be developing their own vaccination is that effective i mean is there enough data sharing currently taking place well, you've touched my soft spot because I have been one of the advocates of data sharing many, many years ago. And I think that um, this is the real good news about this epidemic, that uh, of this pandemic, that actually there's a lot of data sharing that's going on. I think that there needs to be uh, more uh, preparedness in reacting to all this data sharing that we can achieve because we are able now with our computing power to um, analyze incredible amounts of data that can certainly speed vaccine production that can help us reach antivirals um, that will work first and a whole load of other information, but we need to work together as a community. Okay. This is everybody's problem. Professor Ilaria Kapoor, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.